Hello, this is Mr. Stansbury. I'm going to take you through the notes on formula rearrangement. At the end of this, you should be able to say I can solve various formulas for a given variable. All right, let's take a look at some examples. Um, example 26, make x the subject of this here. So <clears throat> what we got to do is get x all by itself. So first thing we want to do, add two y to both sides. All right. That's gone there, and we have 3x equals 2y plus 12. And you can write 12 plus 2y, it doesn't matter. And then the last step is to divide everything by 3, and we get x equals, we can just write that as 2 thirds y, and then 12 over 3 is 4. All right, that's probably the best way to write that. You probably could write it as 2y plus 12 all over 3, but this is probably a little bit better answer. All right, um, B here, <clears throat> um, solving for x. So again, we want to get rid of the y. So let's subtract 5y from both sides. And we have negative 2x equals, I always like to put my variables first and then my constants after that. So let's put negative 5y plus 17. And then we're going to divide everything by negative 2. All right, <clears throat> so with that here, we have x equals the two negatives uh, turn into a positive there. So we have 5 halves y or 2.5y. And then 17 halves is uh, 8 and a half. Now we have a positive divided by a negative, so that's going to be negative 8 and a half. All right, all right, let's take a look at some more here. Make y the subject of, so we've got to get y all by itself. So right now we have x times y. x is being um, attached to the y with multiplication. So to undo multiplication, we got to divide, right? Because that gets, gets rid of that x. x over x is 1, so that's 1y. So y equals 6 over x. All right, this one here. Again, we're getting y by itself. So um, we got to get rid of the x and the a and the b. So since we want to get rid of all of the a and b, again, since, and also since we're solving, we want to always want to do the reverse order of operations, so we want to add and subtract first. So we want to get rid of both the a and the b, so we're going to subtract the a and b from both sides. All right, so we have negative xy equals, and you can do negative ab plus z or z minus ab either way. And let's see, we've got to get rid of the negative x, so we've got to divide both sides by negative x, because again, the x, the negative x is being attached by a multiplication, so we've got to divide to get rid of it, All right? And so we get y equals. Um, one important thing here is we've got to make sure that we, we don't have negatives um, in the denominator, unless it's, you know, like a binomial or a trinomial, uh, multiple terms. But since it's just one thing here, we want to multiply everything by negative one to get rid of the negative in the denominator. So that'll turn into positive X down there. So then we switch this to negative Z plus AB all over X. And that would be just fine. Or you could write AB minus Z over X. All right. Solve them for Y. So we got to get rid of the EF, subtract E f oops let's see e f there we go so that's gone and we have c minus e f equals 2 y and then last step divide everything by 2 so we could just leave this as c minus e f over 2 that would be just fine it's probably easier that way you could put c over 2 minus e f over 2 but this is probably um, simpler there all right <clears throat> this one here, we have a fraction equals another fraction. Pretty much always our best first bet here is to cross multiply, do cross products, right? So we know that A times Y equals B times X, BX. And then we got to solve for Y, so we got to divide both sides by A, so we get Y equals BX over A. All right? All right, one last example to look at, number 28 here. The formula for a sphere is area equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Make r the subject of the formula. So we got to get r all by itself. So <clears throat> um, what we really got to get rid of over here is we got to get rid of the 4 thirds and the pi. So we have to really divide by both the 4 thirds 
and we also have to divide by the pi. So you can do this. You can divide both sides by 4 thirds pi, right? And that will get rid of those. And that's just going to leave r cubed over here. Okay. Now, on your, if you're going to, well, I can't really do this with a calculator because you have a variable in there, a equals. But we have divided by 4 thirds pi. So since we're dividing by a fraction, let's flip this over and move it back to the top. And so we have 3 fourths a, right? And it's all still over pi. Right, so probably a little bit nicer way to write that would be 3a over 4 pi. We could do that, and then that equals r cubed. Right, so then to get rid of the cube, we simply cube root both sides. And <clears throat> for really what we need here, let's just write this as the cube root of this big mess, because there's no perfect cubes left in here. 3a over 4 pi. So we can just leave it like that. Okay. All right. If you have any other questions on formula rearrangement, please feel free to ask in class. Thank you.